One, two, one, two, one, two, two, one. One, two, one, two. Christmas is kind of bittersweet for me because when I was a kid...
Check one, check, check. Whoa, it's going nice. Check, check, check. Test one, check one, check, 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 check one, test one, check one, test one, check one. Check one, test one, check one, test one. Check one, test, check, check, test one, check one. Check one, test one. Check one, test one, check one, test one, check one, test one, check one, test one, test, check, check one, test one. Check one. Check, check one, test one, check one, test one, check, 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 check one, test one, check one, test one, check. Test check 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 test check 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 test testing one check one One test one check one test one check one. Hold on, hold on, mic fall a bit. Check one test one check one test one check one test one. Good. A little more. Hold on. Check one test one check one test one. Check one. Is that good? Good.
right here. I think Bree's in this monitor over here just a little bit.
Check, check, check. I need to listen to the whole song. Check one, two, one, two. Maddie's had too much coffee. Coffee. Check. Check. One, two, one, two, one. One. I set my own marker. Check. Check one, checking, check, check, checky, check, 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 check. You make me brave. Check, check, checky, check. You always muted me. <laughs> check, check, still checking. Checking better than three could ever check. Check, 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 check.
check. For the first time. I think our microphone is working. One, two. Hey, that's much better. We shout, shout, and your kingdom comes. Shout, shout, and the walls fall down. Our God be praised. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And we shout, shout to the ends of the earth. Shout, shout until you return. Someone's gonna dance for the first time Hear the music
down here. We're going to do the second one. We're going to go. Oh, come let us go. So, retard. All right, so we'll take it from there. What? It's a, it's a musical term. Sing choirs of angels Sing in exaltation Sing all ye citizens of heaven above I need to hear people Glory to God Glory in the highest Oh come let us adore Him Oh come let us adore Him Oh come let us Come on, come on, Manuel. Starts a little bit like this. All right, so I'll do a two and I'll do a one, two, three, four, and everybody else come in.
Can you run to my desk and see if there's a black tape over my desk?
Okay, here we go. At the foot of the cross, please. Mark will probably come in here and talk, so um, can we just get through it?
let's do, uh, let's just, can all the vocalists come stand right next to me for a second? Just the singers. Wanna see what we're doing? All right, you guys got it. So actually, sing it. Thanks. All right, moving on. Now this song here, the "When the Tears Fall," we're only going to do a pre-chorus and a chorus, and then a pre-chorus and a chorus. Um, and then somehow we're going to get it into the chorus of "Our God Is Greater," and it works in my head, but I haven't tried it with anybody yet. Check one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's try it again. 
and take some work. When hope is lost, I'll call you sister dear. When pain surrounds, I'll call you healer. When silence falls, you'll be the song within my heart. I will praise you, I will praise you, when the tears fall, still I will sing to you, I will praise you, Jesus praise you, through the suffering, still I will sing, when hope is lost. I'll call you Savior. When pain surrounds, I'll call you healer. When silence falls, you'll be the song within my heart. Oh, I will praise you. I will praise you. Yeah, let's try that. Um, let's try it. Let me try something different. So I'm going to go, uh, I will pray still, I will sing to you. All right, let's take it to the chorus going right, the pre-chorus going right into the chorus where we build up. You'll be the song within my heart. Oh, I will praise you. I will praise you when the tears fall, still I will sing to you. I will praise you, Jesus praise you, through the suffering, still I will sing When hope is lost, I'll call you Savior. When pain surrounds, I'll call you healer. When silence falls, you'll be the song within my heart. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are high. Yeah, okay, Michelle, I'm going to add that one last. Uh, I'm going to do the pre-chorus once again, or verse one, however I have it on there. Does that make sense? Bree, are you playing some keys? Is that in there at all? The one we just sang, when tears fall? Okay. Yeah, try a little bit. So we'll start for that from the beginning. When hope is lost, I'll call you Savior. When pain surrounds, I'll call you healer. When silence falls, you'll be the song within my heart. I will praise you, I will praise you, when the tears fall.
All right, we're good. We know this one. Yeah? What part of yourself? More of Rachel in her monitor. You got it or you want me to get it? I'm going to the bridge. Sickness can't stay any longer. Your perfect love is casting out fear. You are the God of all power. It is your will that my life be here. Sickness can't stay any longer. Your perfect love is casting out fear. You are the God of all power. And it is your will that my life be here. Sickness can't stay. That's a little high, huh? I won't go for that one. Your perfect love is casting out fear. You are the God of all power. And it is your will that my life is in. I reach my hand. I reach my hand to the heaven. I lift my eyes to where my help comes. All right, we're good. My office at 902.
the alphabet. Any other
Good morning. Let's stand together, and we're going to worship God. Let's see, we, we did this song a while ago. Let's see if we remember the chorus. We shout, shout for your kingdom come. Shout, shout, and the walls fall down. Our God be praised. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we shout, shout to the ends of the earth. Shout, shout until you return. Our God be praised. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Feet shaking, let justice roll like a river. Let justice roll like a river. Get your feet to people. Love good and hate what's evil. Let justice roll like a river. Let justice roll. And we shout, shout, and the kingdom come. Shout, shout, and the walls fall down. Oh, God be praised. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we shout, shout to the ends of the earth. Shout, shout until you return. Our God be praised. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. You're the friend of the one forgotten. You fight the cause of the weak and broken. Let justice roll like a river. Let justice roll like a river. Let justice roll. And we shout, shout for your kingdom come. Shout, shout, and the walls fall down. Our God be praised. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we shout, shout to the ends of the earth. Shout, shout until you return. Our God be praised. Whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, oh. Someone's gonna dance for the first time. Hear the music, hear the music. Someone's gonna find their healing. Hear the music, hear the music. Someone's gonna dance for the first time. Hear the music. Hear the music, someone's gonna run to freedom. Hear the music, and here it comes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here it comes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here it comes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we shout, shout, the kingdom come. Shout, shout, and the walls fall down. Our God be praised. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we shout, shout to the ends of the earth. Shout, shout until you return. Oh, God be praised. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone's gonna dance for the first time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone's gonna find their healing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone's gonna dance for the first time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone's gonna run to freedom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Spend some time singing some Christmas this morning. I know it's Christmas songs, but you know what? It's worship of our kings. Let's sing together. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. We sing choirs of angels. 
Sing in exaltation, oh, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Oh, come let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we are here to worship you this morning, Lord. Father, we uh, thank you for your presence that's here today, oh, Father. Father, we want you to be number one in our life this morning. We want to prioritize you to be the most important person in our life. Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray that you would stretch us and that you would challenge us and that you would meet with us today and that we would encounter your presence. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, welcome to Flag Church. We're wel glad that you guys are here. Um, we're all about building relationships. We're all about building vertical and horizontal relationships. And so today, we're going to take a few minutes to uh, make our guests and everyone else feel welcome. So if you want to find someone you did not come with, shake their hands, and let's make them feel welcome. Hey, let's go ahead and find a seat. I know this is going to be a little different from your normal routine where there's a trailer video and you guys are like, where's the trailer video? I mean, this is not, I'm your trailer video today. How's that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, we're going to change things up. This is a, a special and unique Sunday where we're going to be receiving two offerings. Um, and uh, this morning, we're going to be receiving our first uh, tithe and offering that we would take on a, on a regular basis. And um, later in the service, you'll see uh, the display here. And um, Pastor Mark will talk more about our special Christmas one-time offering that we'll do uh, later in the service. But if you're our guest today, we ask that all of you fill out that connection card. And if you're a guest, we just ask that you just drop that in the connection, ba uh, in, in the connection basket, in the basket when the baskets come along, and do not give in the offering. We are glad that you're here today, and uh, just drop that card when the baskets come along. Once again, thank you for your continued giving. We're able to bless people and love people like we did at the outreach uh, last week, and the reason we're able to do that is because of your giving, so thank you for that. Hey, also, the, uh, today, right after second service, if you signed up to uh, join the team and, and to help serve uh, 
Pastor Mark was telling me there are 100 of you that have said yes to some new area to serve, uh, and that's exciting, and that's why we're able to go to three services starting January, so thank you for that. We will have an orientation, it's about 30 minutes, right after second service. Uh, you need to just come in here, and then Pastor Mark will direct you as to where you need to go, so that'll be right after second service for 30 minutes. Hey, Chi Alpha is taking Christmas break, all the college students are gone, so they'll be, not, they'll be taking a break for the next few weeks. Today, uh, at 7 o'clock, Pastor Mark, uh, why did I have 7 in my head? Five, I saw the 7. Five. 5 to 7, there you go, thank you. Pastor Mark and Sarah would love to have you guys come hang out at their house. It's an open invitation to the whole church. If you need directions, there are uh, little cards at the Welcome Center that you can grab, but please come hang out with them, they'd love to have you. Um, also, the holiday schedule, we uh, have that on the uh, TWAF as well this week at Flag. Communion service come and go on the 24th. Uh, the youth will be doing a bowling event on the 30th. Uh, so if you have teenagers and they have uh, Christmas break, here's a way to get them uh, out of the house to do something fun, to get them plugged in. Hey, the ladies will be starting a new study in January called The Best Yes. I heard a lot of great things about this uh, book or this study. So if you are not plugged in, uh, get plugged in on Wednesday nights. Here's a great way. New Year resolution. Hey, get started up. It'll be great. Also, the guys are going to be doing a new series too. My One Word. Uh, the ladies did this last year. Uh, I said last year. This year, the beginning of this year. Uh, but the guys are going to be doing this, all the men's life groups. So if you're a, a guy in here and he's not plugged in, hey, great time to get plugged in with a life group. Uh, the, the teenagers... We'll also be starting uh, a four-week series talking about uh, how to manage your finances God's way. It is uh, Dave Ramsey's uh, Financial Peace for Teenagers, teaching them how to handle finances. So we'll be starting that the first week in, uh, first Wednesday in January. So get your teens plugged in, middle school and high schoolers. That'll be a four-week series. Also, the teens will be going on a winter retreat. This is the first time we're doing this. Uh, we're hoping for snow so we can have a lot of fun. But it'll be in Oklahoma at Sky Ranch uh, Retreat Center. Get your teens plugged in. We'll have more information uh, in the, uh, in the uh, this week at FLAG. Also, just a reminder, we'll, we'll be taking a spe special one-time Christmas offering later on in the service. Pastor Mark will talk more about that. And at this time, if the ushers would come, we'll go ahead and receive our regular morning tithe and offering. And if you're a guest, please do not give in the offering. Just drop that connection card when the baskets come. Christmas is kind of bittersweet for me because when I was a kid, my first time performing, I was six years old, and uh, I was performing in our Christmas pageant at church, and I had one line in one song. It was the song, Do You Hear What I Hear? And I messed it up. I sang, a child, a child, sleeping in the night with a tail as big as a kite. That's not the way that song goes, ladies and gentlemen. People get mad when you sing about baby Jesus with a tail. Think about that song, Do You Hear What I Hear? It's psycho. Who wrote that? <laughs> Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy. <laughs> I think the shepherd boy's been in the field a little too long, don't you? <laughs> Talking to the sheep. <laughs> nah! Really? <laughs> nah! Oh. We gotta tell the mighty king. It's worse, they go to the mighty king, you know. A child, a child shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. How about a blanket? How about some soup? A child shivered in the cold. Throw some gold on him, he'll be fine. <laughs> he's got pneumonia, but he's loaded. That kid is gonna be some. Good morning, family life. How are we doing this morning? I am doing well, a lot better than I was last week. Thank you for the privilege of not shaking your hand last week because you didn't want to shake my hand last week. You would have caught something you didn't want. The, uh, I brought something up here. I'll show it to you in just a moment. It's one of the rarest things somebody could ever have. It's really hard to get. 
it's uh, if you play any sports at all, I feel a little loud. It sounds good to me, but if it's fine to you guys, it's good with me. The, uh, uh, every team wants one, and almost no team has one. Uh, it's something we want in our life. It's a symbol of being undefeated. This is a 1972 Miami Dolphins pennant. All of my family lives in the same county in Ohio, except one aunt who's passed away. She lived down in Florida. So whenever she came back to visit, she always brought something. The only thing we knew about in Florida was Miami Dolphins. Well, 1972, for those of you that are in the know, Miami Dolphins went undefeated, which would seem like it's a common thing, you know? No team has done it since then. Many teams have tried. Every team tries every year to go undefeated. I checked the stats this year. 32, I think, I think it was 32 NFL teams. Three of them were undefeated after three games. 29 of them failed after three games. And after the fourth game, none of them were undefeated. None. And we would love to live an undefeated life. Yet none of us have. Most of us haven't lived an undefeated week, have we? <laughs> There's things that, that hop, hop up and remind us about the defeats in our life. And this time of the year, the holiday season, seems to multiply those defeats, especially even if they're in the past. Some of those defeats might be in the past, or some of them may have been just a couple months ago, and the holidays come, and it seems to amplify it all. We've all got defeats. Maybe directions we wish we had never gone that took us to destinations we never wanted to be at, and they bring us a reminder of a defeated decision that maybe we made. And we think everyone else is holding up their undefeated tag because they got, they got the fakeness going on really good, but none of us in the room are undefeated. <laughs> this season, there may be gifts you can't buy because of past defeats in your life that have to do with a job loss, poor credit management, or changing your major 14 times and taking three semesters of classes you're still paying for in your 30s. Defeats that we wish we never had. Maybe there's plans you can't make this holiday season. You can't make the plan to go to so-and-so's house because you're not related to so-and-so anymore because of a defeat in a family situation, because of a relationship situation you wish you would have handled better, wiser, kinder, and you're not able to wave this over your house because hardly anybody does. Maybe there's been some emotional or health defeats in your life, opportunities you let slip, Choices that bring about ugly consequences sexually, financially, relationally, educationally. And this season seems to put those choices in a megaphone. And it seems like we wear them all over our hearts. A direction maybe you wish you hadn't taken left you at a destination you wish you weren't at. And this season amplifies it. A season where fake is flaunted all over the place. Where perfect is paraded and elation seems everywhere. When we feel defeated, how can we still walk in hope in the holidays? Isn't that little baby supposed to bring joy to the world? Isn't he supposed to bring joy? How do we have joy when none of us can wave this over our life? What is that Savior going to be able to do for us today, now, when we've lived in a way that is not undefeated? Jesus knew, that Savior, that baby in the manger knew that we would face defeats. We would face disappointments, losses. We would have situations that are difficult. So if you came today and you're hoping for a message about how perfect everything is in life, uh, Oprah's on channel 47, I think, <laughs> or you can go find something else. We're going to talk about some real life stuff here. And Jesus said this in John chapter 6, jingle bells, John chapter 16. I told you this stuff, everything I've told you, I told you these things, so that in me you may have an undefeated life. No. You know, peace. In this world, you'll be undefeated. No, in this world, you'll have trouble. But take heart. I kicked the world's tail to the curb. I defeated the world. I overcame the world. I lived undefeated. And in me, you can be overcome that world. In me, you can have that peace. So if you have your bulletins, pull them out. I'm going to follow along this morning. Talking about facing defeat when we feel defeated. Whether you're in the midst of a defeat situation or not. If you didn't get a bulletin, lift your hand up. We'll get you one. Where do defeats come from? Defeats come from natural causes. We are broken people in a broken world. Sinful natural causes. We do wrong things. Other people do wrong things. Bad things happen in our life. We face defeat or feel defeat, not because God is unfair, but because life is unfair. Those things happen, and they come to everybody we know. Sometimes we feel defeated because of unrealistic expectations, expectations that are impossible to meet, 
And then we fall short. The crazy thing is this. We set an expectation up here, and we get close to it, make forward progress, but we feel defeated because we fell short of an amazing goal. And we refuse to look at how far we've come. Instead, we look about how we didn't make it to where we thought we should be, so that way the Facebook post would really look good, and all our friends would be envious of us. Yeah, yeah, unrealistic expectations. I mean, who's got six-pack abs? All of us want them. All of us think it would be great. So if you have someone nearby you that has six-pack abs, would you please take a moment and point at them? Randy Burke, I know you do. All right, who else? Who, who else has six? Jamal, I know you do. Don't be, don't be shy on me. You're not running, running back fit state and not having six-pack Who else has six-pack abs? Come on. Okay, so less than 1% of us do. Does that mean we're all failures? I'm going to walk around like a failure the rest of my life because I don't have six-pack abs. I am such a loser. Unrealistic expectations. Do you want a dream form? Sure. Photoshop. Put them on. But nobody gets it all done, and nobody accomplishes everything, and nobody lives undefeated. Another reason for <laughs> defeats that we face, a common enemy. He's working for our defeat, friends. He screams, you are a failure. When failure is not a person, failure is an event. He screams, failure is final, though failure is almost never fatal. He screams and we cower and we listen as if he has the last rule. But I believe my Jesus said he's overcome the world, not Satan overcame Jesus and not Satan overcame us. We don't need to listen to what he has to say. The last word doesn't go to our common enemy. The last word goes to the victor. So a couple questions for you today. What if I didn't let defeat define me? What if I didn't let defeat define me? I can't stop defeat. They're going to happen. I'm not going to be waving this. They're going to happen. But what if I didn't let it define me? And I was putting these notes together. I thought, I have a personal illustration I need to share. Literally 14 years ago, in two days, we, uh, we put all the stops out as the new pastors at Family Life. We've been here six months and we put all the stops out to put on the best, biggest Christmas service we could. We were meeting in the rented facility in front of a quality floor up by Mola Chevrolet. We did everything that we could. And for us at that time, we put a front page color ad on the newspaper. People read the newspaper. It was important at that time. They had 10, 10, 000, a circulation of 10000 It cost us 120 bucks to put that first full color ad in the front. And that $120 was probably close to about uh, 10% of a week's worth of income for the church. We did that. We brought in a, uh, the local radio station, which wasn't Caleb at the time. He did a, a one-man drama that was excellent. We brought Dave Garrison in for that. We promoted that. So you don't even have to listen to your pastor preach. We're going to have a drama. It's going to be awesome. I mean, I, I knew I was hitting the right buttons. I knew this was a good thing to do. It bombed. We even had stage lights on the floor that we could plug into the wall. It was so cool. We walked out of the little side room when we got done praying, and, and Dave's in the back still putting, finishing his makeup stuff. And I walk out, and now the, the stories can be apocryphal, depending on what you want to Well, there was two people there. There was only four. I went back and looked at the actual numbers this morning. There was 16 with the adults and two in the nursery. That's it. Out of the 18 people, three of them were my family, and one was Dave. <laughs> 14 total people showed up. 14. Am I going to let defeat define me? Some of you know this story well because you were one of the 14. <laughs> I tried hiding it from my face. Oh, yeah, by the way, six of them were on the platform trying to lead worship <laughs> to eight people sitting out there. Be a good opportunity to let defeat define me. Even though defeat, excuse me, even though failure is an event, it's not a person. It'd be a good opportunity to realize that's it, let's just quit. We've tried six months, we did everything we could, it's not getting any better, let's just jet. But it wasn't final, but it felt that way. Because some of the harshest words we say are words we say to ourselves. Layman, you moron, why'd you do that? Can't you figure out that you should have done that before the campus went on, spring, on, on winter break? I look at that back at that now and see that. I don't know you real well. I don't know all your story. I don't know how you feel about yourself today, but I know two things about you. Number one thing I know about you is the person that's most qualified to deceive you is yourself. And number two, I know how God feels about you. He wrote it in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. It says this. If you're feeling defeated, let this sink in. Long before he laid the earth's foundations, 
He had you in mind. I'll personalize it. He had settled on you as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Not to be made whole and holy by your undefeated life. To be made whole and holy. So two defining questions for you today. Number one, who am I listening to? Who am I listening to? The first Christmas, Mary gets a visit from an angel. And the angel comes and says to her, this amazing statement says, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Those words don't fit. Mary. Highly favored. That's, that's a term for royalty. The Lord is with her. She doesn't see anything in her life that says the Lord is with her. Those words don't fit. How is she going to put those words on? That must be for somebody else. That must not be for her. She has to decide who she's going to listen to. God says things about you that when you're feeling defeated, you don't think they fit your heart, your mind, and your life. But if you'll get him inside, his words can start not just fitting you, but molding you so they fit you like a glove. You are of immeasurable worth to him. And your current circumstances have never determined his feelings towards you. He loves you with passion and without regret. He cannot love you anymore, and he's chosen not to love you any less. If God has a fridge, your picture's on it. Legit. Unless it's digital fridge, then I don't know what he's doing there, man. Why is it God says things about us and we casually forget them and don't think they matter, but parents, spouses, teachers, mentors, coaches, bosses, coworkers say things and it sticks to our heart like graffiti? Why do we so casually throw off his words and let the others stick so tightly? Whose voice needs to be removed from my life? Ask yourself that. Whose voice needs to be removed from my life? Mary, if she would have shared this with everybody, hey, an angel told me I was highly favored by God, would have had 40 people tell her, you're nuts, woman. Whose voice needs to be removed from your life? You may not be able to remove them physically, and you may not even be able to remove them audibly. But why do they have the impact in your life that they do? Maybe it has to do with question number two. Whose approval do I desire? Whose approval do I desire? Do you remember junior high? I know you tried blotting it out, but think with me. Try it, try it. Who did you want to approve of you in junior high? Remember how powerful those approvals or disapprovals affected you? And as you've grown, some of that has changed, but some of that hasn't. We still have the need and the desire for approval, and I don't know from my understanding of the Scripture that that's wrong to have. It all depends whose approval I'm desiring. Desiring approval is natural. That's normal. But whose approval is going to dictate whether that's a healthy thing or not? With the holidays in season, whose approval you, decide, you desire that maybe you've never received? Maybe it's a mom or a mother-in-law that's going to come by and nitpick your house, and all you want to hear is, I approve of how you decorate. It looks nice. And you would just like almost, almost give up all your Christmas presents for those words. Maybe it's a dad who reminds you of all your past mistakes, and all you want to hear is, I'm proud of you. Not I'm proud of you, but just I'm proud of you. Or maybe it's a child who's going to blame you for their current misfortunes, and all you want to hear is, I forgive you. I hope to God you get to hear that. And go in with hope high, and I hope that approval comes. But if it doesn't, and you have a defeat, what are you going to do? You hope these people will change, but they may never change. They may give you what you want, what you need, what you deserve, but they may not. Do you have to have their approval? Or can you move forward and still have joy in your life? You may have had unpleasable parents, but please don't project that onto God because he's not an unpleasable God. You can have his approval. Is his approval what you're seeking? Because here's the crazy thing about approval. It answers this question. Who do I want to have power over my life? Who do I want to have power over my life? Anyone I look to for approval has power over my life. If you don't believe that, look at your yearbook and how you cut your hair and the clothes you wore. Some of you should look at those and go, just shoot me now. I can't believe I wore that in that picture. Just shoot. I can't believe it. Some of you, some of you ladies had Big Bang Theory going on in your hair a long time ago. <laughs> why did, some of you guys are going, you just wish you had bangs right now. But why did you wear, have your bangs out to here? Whose approval were you desiring? You're, want, you're wanting the approval of those around you. In 30 years, if someone puts a picture up, hey, this is what churches did back in the... 2014s. They're going to go, seriously, a table? 
How stupid, how moronic, how early 2000s that was. They're going to laugh at the way we do things. Who cares? But right now, anyone I'm looking to for approval has power over my life, which means they've won my heart. And I don't think I like that. I know I don't like back looking at junior high and seeing whose approval I was trying to win, thinking that they had control over my heart, but they did. Because I was willing to do whatever would please them. Because I wanted their pleasure. I wanted their approval. Who's won your heart? Who do you want to win your heart? Last question. I think it's the last one. Where would I be if I had allowed defeat to transform me instead of deform me? See, when defeat comes, we usually take it like a, like a slap to the face. And sometimes it defeats hard. If it's public, we never feel like we're the same again. You know, after a really, really hard defeat, we shouldn't be the same again. We should be changed. But it's really not up to defeat, and it's not up to Satan whether that, whether that defeat transforms us or deforms us. That's up to us surrendering to the power of God in the midst of that defeat. What does the world do with defeat? Hide it! It's embarrassing! I can't believe you were, don't let anybody know that happened to us. Don't let anybody know that happened to you. And we hide defeat. We get, get past it as fast as you can. Hurry, go do something you can do well just so you can feel good about yourself. They're victory junkies. They're addicted to victory. As if having a victory is the only way we can feel good about ourselves. And we can't feel good about ourselves based on a Savior coming to die for us and looks at us and says, you are the object of my love. Because we're not always going to have victories are we we're not called to copy the world joy can't be based on personal victories if you're only happy and joyful when good happens you're going to be unhappy and unjoyful most of your life because no one experiences only good that's a quote from purpose driven life i hope you finished it i finally got got it finished this past week that's like on day 41 it's good God says we're all going to have problems. We're all going to have defeats. None of us are going to hang this over our house. But he wants us to comfort us in those defeats and transform us through them. Not just get past them, but grow through them. And defeat doesn't make problems good. But it makes God good, even in the midst of those problems. See, an exchange has to happen. And some of you are really good at exchanges. You, call, you do it December 26th at Walmart. <laughs> You're all set to make exchanges. You open that gift, and you've got the smile on because the cameras are rolling. Thank you, Aunt Matilda Beulah Bottom Hildegard. That's exactly what I wanted. And you're going, I hope there's a gift receipt because it's going back. It's going to get returned. If you've got something in your life from a defeat you wish you didn't have, I'm going to ask you to change modes for a moment. You've been listening to me. Please stop. And for the next few moments, would you simply receive? Instead of trying to listen and process, receive with your heart a couple passages from Scripture. If you're defeated today, listen to what God wants to do for you. You can read it on the screen, but I'd encourage you not to. I'd encourage you to close your eyes and just listen. He wants to bestow, bestow on you a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Feel like you got ashes all around in your life right now? He wants to give you a crown of beauty. He didn't ask you if you thought you deserved it. He wants to give it. He wants to give you the oil of gladness instead of that mourning and sadness that you have. But I know that sadness is easier to hold on to, but that's not what he wants you to hold on to. He wants to give you a garment of praise instead of that spirit of despair you're carrying around. Your world is screaming to you and says joy is a life without defeat. But God says, bring me your defeat and I can still give you joy. This exchange is ready to happen when there's a change in our hearts. He says he wants to take that heart that you've got and remove it from you and give you a heart of flesh. That heart of stone, that heart that is shut down, that heart is not talking to anybody, that heart has got the fakeness down good. He wants to remove it from you. The heart that is hard because of defeats, and you didn't make it perfect? And then there's this passage in Ephesians I want to read to you. Whether you're feeling defeated or not this morning, listen to what Paul, the apostle, prays for you. He says this, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you. How do you feel when you're defeated? Not strong, that's for sure. He wants to strengthen you 
with power through his spirit. Not through your goodness, not through your wins, not through how awesome you've done and God's so happy how good you've been this week. Strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, not on the fake, not on the outside. Why? So Christ can dwell in your heart by faith, not by goodness, not by having an undefeated week or even an undefeated morning. But that's not all. Paul's not done. He says, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, something that's rooted and established doesn't get bounced around too easy, that you may have power together with all the saints, all those that you think are super spiritual. That way you can grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And that's not all. That you can know his love that goes beyond anything else you know. And that's not all. And that you may be filled, filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, and you can kick defeat to the curb. You don't have to walk in that anymore. That undefeated season of life you keep dreaming of, it ain't happening. It's not coming. But that change of heart can free your heart to exchange junk for joy, and that's what's being offered to you today. Worship team, can you come, please? A change of heart can free your heart to exchange junk for joy. That change in your heart can change who your heart is listening to. That change you need can change whose approval you are desiring. And that change can change who is being granted power in your life. And that change of heart is what he did in me. That change of heart. What if you let God's voice define you? His word define you. His presence define you, and not your defeats. Some of you have had a hard time looking in the mirror. You're having a hard time even looking at me right now. What if you let God's voice define you, and not your defeats? What if those new defeats that are going to come, and the defeat you're walking in right now, and we're not saying, just pretend it's not there. It's not really a defeat. No, it is. And it stinks, and it's there. We're not saying pretend. Pretend. There's enough people saying pretend. We're saying be real and let his power come in. And what if that defeat transformed you instead of made you walk with a limp in your heart the rest of your life? I wish that defeat had never happened. I'm looking over some of you. I know your stories. I wish that defeat had never happened. But it has. And here we are. And we have this baby in a manger. And we have this man on a cross. And we have this empty tomb. So what are we going to do? Normally, I'd ask you to stand right now. I'm going to ask you to stay seated and bow your heads and hearts with me this morning instead. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Father, I pray you'd win our hearts today. Some of us, we've surrendered our hearts to you. We've given our heart to Jesus in in vacation Bible school at camp, and we gave our heart to Jesus three months ago. But I pray that you would help us let you win our hearts today with your head still bowed and your eyes still closed Tyler and Julie are going to be playing a song nice and softly that you probably don't know just stay seated I challenge you not to sing it I challenge you just to receive it just to receive it thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. At the foot of the cross, where grace and suffering meet, you have shown me your love through the judgment you've received. You won my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Coming to kiss the feet of mercy. Bring every burden down at the foot of the cross. 
Keep receiving it. Would you stand with me this morning? The message was titled, When You Feel Defeated. It has almost nothing to do with sin. There's plenty of altar space, east to west, left to right. There's also a very safe, more secure spot. And that safe, secure spot is right where you are. You can grab that chair in front of you and hold on so your knuckles bleed. Or could you come down and kneel as if you're kneeling at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, it's your approval that I desire. There's some voices I'm going to kick out of my life. And even in the midst of my defeat, I'm going to let you transform me instead of let myself and the enemy deform me in the midst of it. Anybody undefeated in the room? Anybody perfect? Then there wouldn't be anybody judging anybody coming down to the altar, would there? Wouldn't be anybody at all, amen? So as they lead it out again, why would you wait and not be the first? Lead us out. You have won my heart, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bring your heart down, friends. Bring your heart. Even if you have to limp, even if you have to limp on your heart, Thank you, God. Set people free today, Lord. Thank you, God. We're trading today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Feel free to come pray with your friends. Please come pray. Please come pray.
when pain surrounds, I'll call you here. When silence falls, you'll be the song within my heart. heart. I will praise you. I will praise you. When the tears fall, still I will sing to you. I will praise you. Jesus, praise you. Through the suffering, still I will sing. When hope is lost, I'll call you Savior. And when pain surrounds, I'll call you Healer. When darkness falls, you'll be the sun within my Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, he's awesome in power, our God, it's our God. Water you turned into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Oh, there's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Our God is greater. And our God is greater. Yes, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power, our God, our God. And if God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand? 